Good morning and thank you for tuning in to our February wellness webinar. My name is Mackenzie and I am one of the marketing coordinators here at Zydo. Today we're going to be hearing from Kay Cooney and the topic that she will be speaking on is called CBD is here to stay. What do you need to know? Kay Cooney is a clinical nurse specialist in gerontology. She is an advanced practice registered nurse. She specializes in geriatrics, hospice, palliative care, and pain management. She's a past fellow of the Practice Change Fellowship, and she often speaks on a host of wellness topics, alternative therapies, and natural health solutions. Without further ado, we will now hear from Kay Cooney. Hi there, my name is Kay Cooney. I am a Young Living Silver Leader and an advanced practice nurse. Um, I live on the East Coast in the U.S. I'm a Boston girl. Um, and I am here today to give you my perspective on CBD and its uses and the implications as I see them. Um, I state that up front because I think depending on who's sitting in this chair, there's so many different ways for us to approach CBD. So I would like to give it sort of the get the basics in there. Um, try and demystify a couple of things and hopefully give you guys some resources that will be helpful. Um, I am a huge, huge fan of CBD and what it can do uh, for folks. So um, I'm thrilled to be here to be able to discuss this with you. So let's start right off the bat um, with what is CBD? Okay, so CBD is one of the molecules that we find in the cannabis family in the plants. So it's present in both marijuana as well as hemp. And back about, what do we know, almost two years, um, the U.S. government had, had okayed CBD use and retail in the 50 states in the United States. Okay, so that, that's what we need to, to know and understand. Why is this relevant? It's a movement that has very much been pushed by the people, right? Some people call this the green movement. And it was very much driven by people who were looking for alternative ways to manage pain, anxiety, um, and, and, and those sorts of things, homeostasis. So one of the things um, that the law, um, law mandated was that you, you cannot have a legal CBD product with a THC value of greater than 0.3%. So the definition of CBD is a cannabis-derived uh, product with less than 0.3% THC. The rest is CBD, and in some cases, uh, other particles, and, and we'll talk about that. So for me, the funny part is, is now that it is legal to grow both um, in, in, in some states, um, when I saw a neighbor with both the hemp and the marijuana plants, um, I, I was blown away. And they are basically, you, you've, it's like big brother, little brother. Nice and tall and lanky is your hemp and short and bushy is your marijuana, okay? Um, marijuana is produced when the hemp plant is grown with the male variety present. And the resin produced in the marijuana is pretty much um, heavily thc with less CBD. CBD is this natural molecule that is in abundance in the hemp plant. So that is, that's why we, we, we do the hemp plant for CBD. Let's talk a little bit about the history of CBD. So, and this is to me is fascinating and really, really important. So back in the early 16th century, hemp came to the U.S. and was used for so many things that farmers were actually fined a certain percentage if they didn't plant some of their crop as hemp. Now, this was because we were using it for textiles, we were using it for um, paper, um, cloth, rope, lots of different things. But the interesting thing, and this is something that we learned way back, the hemp plant is a phytoremediator. And what that means is um, hemp is like a gigantic Hoover vacuum. When you plant it and you put it in the ground, it pulls up the heavy metals, the pesticides, the herbicides, all that stuff, and cleans the soil. The issue is that when it's been used for that purpose to clean up a particularly dirty farming area, you want that discarded. 
And one of the concerns that many of us have that are CBD advocates is that not enough of that is getting discarded, that some of it's making its way back into the market. And um, actually how I know this is when I scan folks who are using an inexpensive form of CBD using the Zytoscanner, what I frequently see is heavy metals on folks that are purchasing less expensive CBD. Again, we'll talk about that. In the 1920s, due to politics, due to the whole shift in um, holistic allopathic healthcare, the, the, the getting rid of the corner herbalist, um, the rise of Big Farm, um, Schedule 1 was the label that got put on CBD, meaning it had no medicinal value whatsoever, um, which I think most of us would agree that is simply just not the case. But it was that sort of politics that put the big no in putting a, a class one, schedule one that's now been lifted. So that's the 20s. Then we, we look at July of 2018 and one of the big farms gets, um, it changed from a schedule one over to a schedule five, and which is still a controlled substance per FDA, but they approve a synthetic CBD, synthetic, so a man-made mimicking what nature produced, to treat a very specific seizure disorder in children. And it has been very effective. So we have that. Then in December of 2018, that's when the Hemp Farming Act came into place and it defined and opened the doors for this. This is an ever evolving, there are still some states ambiguous on this. I get questions all the time, whether or not you can travel with it internationally, domestically, right? All great questions, all questions that we should be answering. Okay, THC versus CBD. When you look at these guys under a microscope, they are not uh, terribly dissimilar. The difference is, is the THC binds really, really tightly to the CB1 receptors in the brain. And we believe that that is why that, that produces the high. The CBD molecule it doesn't directly bind to CB1 or CB2, but it impacts them indirectly. So without that tight bind, you don't get the high. So when we're talking about CBD products, even with a 0.3% THC, we are not talking about something that is going to alter or intoxicate. And I think that that's, that's an important message that we have to get out there to folks as we're educating them. The endocannabinoid system. So wonderfully, we have an endocannabinoid system in our body. So we have receptors, we, we have, um, we make endocannabinoids, right? That is a, the CBD that the body makes to help keep it in homeostasis, in balance. And it's linked to our central nervous system as well as our peripheral nervous system. And it helps the entire body stay in balance. So if the body gets out of balance, the endocannabinoid system sends out natural CBD molecules that the body makes and enzymes, and they regulate the body to bring it back into balance again. So like when you're hot, you sweat, and that brings your body temperature down, sort of like that. Our body makes its own endocannabinoids. 2-AG, which is in breast milk, and anandamide. Let's talk for a second about 2-AG because most of us have seen this in action. And when you understand this, this, this really kind of brings it home. You see a newborn baby and they're breastfeeding. In a mom's breast milk is the 2-AG molecule. So the baby latches on and the baby all of a sudden falls off and is like, they've got that milk drunk, right? Have you ever seen a newborn baby fall off the breast and they're just like, whoa, they're out of it, they're sleeping, they look amazing, we all wanna be that baby. That's the 2-AG molecule, okay? So for something that is that um, tolerated by a brand new baby and is automatically made in our body, this is a very natural supplement. It makes sense that we're looking to how, to, how do we harness this for the body. The other one is anandamide. And anandamide is commonly found in dark chocolate, 
um, truffles, um, I think celery is another one that it's in, but it's known as the bliss hormone. So often when people are craving chocolate when they're grieving or they're going through a difficult time or there's a lots, of, lots of stress, there is actually a reason for that and it's the anandamide molecule that's in it. Um, I love that, I find that fascinating. All right, so now what we have up on the screen, so this is our friend, uh, John Travolta. Um, if you're, um, if you don't understand that reference, you're too young, um, for your own good, but this shows you where all the different receptors are in the body throughout the different systems. And while we make no medical claims on this, what I will share with you is there's a lot of research being done with CBD and Alzheimer's and progressive neurological diseases. So the central nervous system, right? I'm starting in the upper left-hand corner and working my way around. So a lot of folks are looking at research. Will CBD remove the amyloid plaques in dementia patients? Will it help delay cognitive problems? Does it have a role in the immune system? Will it help a person's gut go back into balance and, and be useful with leaky gut issues? Um, can it balance hormones? Does it have a role for diabetes, right? A hormone-driven disease. Um, metabolism, so there are folks who are using CBD with weight loss as well as weight gain, right? Because homeostasis means it can go in either direction. And muscle and bone health, which I would say is probably one of the most common ways that we're using it for pain. Um, and, and also, and I've left out a nerve, central nervous system, um, the whole anxiety and the sleep piece. So I don't look to make any claims today other than this. What we do know about CBD is that it's very well documented that it's a homeostatic agent. It brings the body into balance. So whatever is taking the body out of balance, this is very helpful bringing it in. Um, I will talk a little bit about the muscle and bone health. Um, I have been using CBD um, with my uh, client base, my customer base now for about two years. And what I will tell you is I'm, I've been absolutely blown away. So my whole life's work was always to deal with pain management in the aging population. And when folks are 65 and older, they're already taking a ton of meds. They don't do good with the side effects of um, narcotics. And the over-the-counter stuff is too taxing on their liver and their kidneys. So we're frequently left with difficult ways to manage their pain. And that really was the challenge of my career for almost 25 years. Um, about two years ago, I have a Newfoundland. She's 16 now, so she would have been, what, 14 at the time. Um, we got up one morning, and for whatever reason, she was completely lame. She could not get up. So my husband and I had to put the towel under. We had to lift her together, all 125 pounds, get her in the car, get her to the vet. The vet takes one look at her. I'm crying. I know I'm going to have to put my dog down, and I'm grateful for the time that I have, but of course I want more. And the doctor takes one look at her, palpates her hips, and looks at me, and she goes, oh, no, she's fine. She just needs a little CBD. And I'm like, she just needs a little CBD. Is this doctor crazy? Two doses of CBD later and the dog popped up off the floor, went out the door and went squirrel chasing. And if I hadn't seen it with my own two eyes, I would not have believed that story. That was at the, the aha moment in my head where I had to know everything there was to know about CBD because if it could do that for an aged dog who doesn't know and can't report, doesn't know if this is FDA approved or knows nothing, just gets up and feels better, immediately I thought, oh my gosh, this is gonna be a breakthrough for the 65 and older population. And I will tell you, it has been. My experience with it with folks has been unbelievable, um, which is why I so gladly will talk and educate on this topic because I think the more of us that know about this, the more folks we're helping with this. And we're also dispelling the whole myths around um, this being a marijuana substance, right? This is a plant supplement that has amazing capacity. All right, what's homeostasis, right? On the left is all of the things that life does to our body on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So the food we're eating, the stress, the schedules, the going, uh, the pills, everything we eat, the water we drink, all this stuff is constantly putting the body into a state of distress. And our goal in, in the wellness community is to always put the body back into balance, homeostasis. 
So what CBD does is it goes into the body and it helps balance these systems, right? Love it. Okay, how to choose your CBD. To me, this is the one of the single most important things that we will discuss because quality is everything with CBD. When you have a product that is not FDA regulated, and I'm, I'm okay with it not being FDA regulated, right? I don't want all sorts of folks involved in this. I believe that this is a movement that was driven by the people and will be patrolled by the people. And I'm okay with that. There's different schools of thought on that, just so that you understand. My whole issue around CBD is understanding and being very transparent with it so that we understand what the level of cleanliness is, what has gone on with that CBD. Is it free of pesticides, the solvents it was used to extract it, um, heavy metals, is it clean? Because I don't wanna be trading one set of problems with my clients for another, right? I want only solutions, not additional complications. So we need to be careful and we need to make sure we're choosing the right products and we need to make sure that we're watching the industry and educating people about this, okay? So first of all, you wanna select a company that you know has been around for a while, that they have high built-in quality standards, that they don't add any additional superfluous stuff into your CBD, and they, trust, they test their products for purity and quality, right? And we're gonna talk about the certificate of analysis in, in, in a minute. There are different types of CBD. The first is full spectrum. And a full spectrum CBD is embraced by those people that feel like take the plant exactly as nature intended it, distill it, bottle it. So you get the CBD, you get the THC, you get some CBG, you get all these different terpenes and molecules that are in there. There's a couple of issues with that or a couple of things you should know about that. One, people like full spectrum because they believe in the entourage effect and the entourage effect being keeping it close to nature and all the chemical components in it gives you a synergy of one plus one is three. Okay. I've heard people dispute this. I've heard people who, who simply wouldn't touch a CBD without full spectrum. I'm going to explain to you what my bias is. Um, full spectrum will show up on those people that are drug tested. So if you are military, police, uh, nurse, or a union job, you're somebody that's regularly tested, you will test positive for THC even with a legal CBD of 0.3%. So for those folks, this may not be an option, okay? For folks in the military, the way it's written for the military right now in the United States is they have asked their people through the honor code to simply not um, uh, use CBD at all. They've, just, they've asked, and it really is on an honor system because you we don't have a test yet for the CBD molecule we only have a test for the THC molecule. So they would have no way of knowing if somebody used uh, an isolate per se. This is my second issue, my second issue with full spectrum CBD. My goal is to change um, the pain solutions for the 65 and older communicate, uh, community. If you have had any history of mental illness, if you have had any change in cognition, if you're on multiple medications, as most 65 and older are, you want to avoid the THC. It can cause more um, interactions. Now, for the 65 and under, if there's a mental health, an existing mental health issue, there's also a risk with the THC. So for those populations, I would say you want to avoid it. Okay, next one is CBD isolate. CBD isolate means there's no THC and there's no um, of those other chemicals. What you're getting is a highly concentrated um, product, which is only containing CBD molecules. What I like about this is from the perspective, so I, I straddle the fence in two lands, in wellness alternative therapy and with traditional healthcare. 
My goal is to be able to get CBD to be recognized for what it truly is with hospitals, with physicians, with folks who are doing pain management so that they are easily and comfortably talking about this with their patients. I feel like I've got a better shot with an isolate with no THC and just one component that I'm educating on. I have a better chance of getting that supplement in than I do a, a full spectrum. CBD. So there's my inherent bias. Now, is one better than the other? Y you can debate all day. There's people out there who would debate all day. There are some that would sit here right now and go on and on and on about full spectrum. I, 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 I put my bias right out there for you. Knowing the population that I serve, isolate makes more sense to me. Okay. Now, this is, there's another term we want to know. We want to know the term smart spectrum CBD. So what some folks are doing now is they extract only the CBD molecule and five years down the line, we're going to be buying CBG, CBV. We're going to be buying all these different molecules, which we're finding already different uses for sleep and anxiety. Some molecules are better than others, right? But what a smart spectrum is, is you take an isolate and you put the terpenes back in. Right, So that way you get rid of all of the THC and you can use terpenes, aka essential oils, that we already know through years and years of aromatherapy and what the properties do and the chemicals are within, say, a lavender or a peppermint or whatever. You add them back into the CBD and you basically, you've got a CBD that's boosting this terpene and this terpene that's boosting the CBD and we call that smart spectrum CBD. Um, full spectrum CBD, let's give it a little bit more time. When extracting it, the whole plant is used. That's what we had said. It has plant esters, flavonoids, terpenes. It all comes out in a liquid form. It's harder to regulate the exact combination of, um, so every plant's going to be a little bit different. So when you see uh, certificate, certificates of analysis on this, you're going to see there's a lot of variety in strain and from one company to the other. It does contain 0.3% THC. Okay, so you know that up front. It's not ideal for those that are pregnant or subject to drug testing. And we talked a little bit about that. The pregnant piece is because the CBD is okay for a nursing baby, but the THC can impact um, and cross into the placenta. CBD isolate, it's the purest form of the compound. Um, so for me, that's the easiest to represent to um, academia, if you will. It has zero THC. Um, it uses supercritical CO2, which is an extraction method to break it down. Um, and it's safest for those with the THC sensitivity. So the children, the elderly, um, those with mental illness. Um, challenge number one, how do we determine the quality of COA, uh, determining the quality of these products? And my answer is it's the certificate of analysis slash authenticity. So knowing that CBD is a phytoremediator, what that means is we want to know that this is clean CBD. So this certificate, this COA that we're asking for, it's sort of like um, the gold standard that we should be using for all of our products, but we don't. But it's the gold standard of where did it come from? How was it processed? What's the percentage? Does the label on the on the bottle match what, what the COA, the certificate's telling us, right? So what you're looking for when you get this, and now understand that I teach the 65 and older population several times a week on this topic. So if we can get um, older folks who are not tech savvy to understand this and do this step, we all can learn this. So what I teach them is pull it, okay? So pull the certificate and take a good look at it. The first question you wanna ask yourself is, what's the percentage, uh, percentage of herbicides, pesticides? And the answer you're looking for is zero, right? You don't want any pesticides or herbicides in something that you're using for health and wellness. Your answer to that might be, oh, well, that's a no-brainer. Well, it's not a no-brainer. So in the United States, we have a federal recommendation of what an acceptable amount of herbicide and pesticide is in our supplemental products, and it's not zero. 
So the problem with that is if there's a little herbicide pesticide in your CBD and a little in your breakfast cereal and a little in the water you're drinking, right? That bioaccumulation makes a difference in your body. So you want zero. So when you see meets government standards or less, less than FDC requirement, that's not a zero. And folks should understand that as they're looking at these certificates. Next thing I, I advise them to look at is look for the heavy metals. Your heavy metals that we're looking at mostly in this is mercury, cadmium, lead are the ones, are the big ones that we're looking for. Arsenic, sorry, is another one. What do you want those numbers to be? Zero. Same thing. You don't want to see meets government standards, less than FDC requirement. No, you want zeros for the same reason. And heavy metals that hang out in our body and in our brain absolutely have long-term consequences. So we want to be careful about that. You want to look at how much CBD is in there and what's on their certificate should absolutely match what's in the bottle. So if the certificate says there's 50 milligrams of CBD and the bottle says it's 100, there's something wrong there, right? About a year or so ago, there was a study done out of um, California. And I believe it was the state of California that did the study. It could have been um, federal, but I think it was state. And they pulled 100 CBD samples. 70 of them were inappropriately labeled, contaminated, that what was on the certificate didn't match what was there. So again, we know that this is a problem and we want to be careful and do our due diligence because we don't want to not have access to this unbelievable supplement, okay? So you want to make sure your CBD matches from there, okay? The amount of THC, if you're looking for an isolate, you do not want to see meets government standard. That means it has 0.03%. What you want is zero, right? Know what you want. It's zero. And then is there any solvent left in it, right? So there's all different ways in which we process um, hemp products. We want to make sure that everything they used has been taken out and that we have a nice, clean product as nature intended it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about delivery and dosage. There's lots and lots of ways in which you can get CBD. And Again, I want to keep this as close to nature as possible. So you can do inhalation or vape. Without question, that's one of the fastest ways to get the CBD in. It's also the most toxic and the most dangerous because of what it's um, attached to. When would I use that? So the nurse in me would save that for really the end of life patient that's struggling. Folks that want to do this on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, as a substitute for cigarettes or something else, you know, I can't co-sign that. That, that. That's on you. My job is to just to tell you it is the most toxic and the most dangerous. Next way, gummies. All right. This is where I get a tiny bit of my soapbox. I struggle with any adult supplement being made into a red gummy chewable that a child's going to mistake for candy. I also think that to take your CBD and to add it to gelatin, sugar, and a whole thing is, is taking, um, it, it, we're losing something in the translation there. And every single thing that goes through our lips and down our throat has to go by the SIP system, which, are, which is our live is alert system of anything going in. All meds, everything we eat, everything we drink. So those gummy bears are getting broken down before they get to the body. So I don't know how effective they really are. They're adding a component of sugar. There's something that kids could get into. Um, if you're gonna take a supplement, take it, take, take a good one and let it work for you. Um, tablets and capsules. So let's talk a little bit about the liver system and the SIP system, CYP. Anything you eat or goes into your body get has to get approved by uh, the liver. And the liver takes a look at it and goes, yeah, no, that's, that's not on the approved list. We're going to break that down. So some say as much as 80% of CBD ingested never makes it to the bloodstream. Okay? That's an issue. That means you're paying a lot of money and you're not getting the full bang for your buck. So when people say to me, oh, I've already tried CBD and it doesn't work, I always ask, what was the delivery route? Let's look at, at the different ways that we do this. 
So there's a way around that though. So hold tight, we'll keep going. Next one, bombs. Sort of that wax-based heavy um, bomb that goes to the area. Love it. Love it. It's because you have less medication interaction for folks. It pretty much stays where you put it. And the relief is fairly quick, like 15 to 30 minutes. So if I was going to use, and I'm just going to use this lotion that I happen to have sitting here. If I was going to be using like a CBD bomb product, and it's, let's say my wrist hurt, I would take less than that, right? Less than that. And I'd put it on the joint and I would sit there and for about a minute or so, I'd rub it in. That would warm the area up. That helps it to get in and hit faster, right? And it maximizes getting your product, right? Nice and rubbed in. Love, love, love the, the CBD bomb and wax-based ones. I feel like they work really, really well on joint pain, um, uh, sprained ankles, post-surgery, things like that, okay? Other way we can do it is we can do, sorry, and, and the bombs really are not interacting much with the meds. The tablets and the capsules, there is some drug-drug interaction. And I always advise people to go back to the pharmacist. In New York right now, they mandated that their pharmacies um, and their pharmacists have to be part of education of the population around CBD. So they're in the know. So once one state does that, most will look at that for a little bit and go, oh, that's a successful model, we're in on it. When you speak to your pharmacist right now, you're getting good education from them. They're in the know. They know what's coming down the pike. They will tell you what drugs you don't want to be pairing it with. If somebody's on Coumadin, there are decisions that have to be made in, in conjunction with the physician that of, of lowering or hiring the amount or spreading the dose out, right? So even though it is a pretty benign, um, very little interaction, you still want to be careful that you are not stressing out the body um, with the meds they're already on, right? A good pharmacy drug-drug interaction is what you're asking for. Rollers. Rollers are slightly different than the wax base or the creams, and it's because they're sort of a coconut or MCT oil base that is that you roll onto the area. I've seen people using these for stress reduction as well as for pain management on the go. Um, they seem to do the trick, right? You're going to get some absorption into the system and some drug interaction, but not a whole heck of a lot. Not the same as with oral. And then this is my favorite, is the liquid. So sublingual CBD maximizes absorption and helps bypass a vast majority of your liver SIP system. And that is because underneath our tongue, we have an unbelievable um, vasculature that that absorbs what's in there. So in hospice, morphine and Ativan were always delivered sublingual. So we did pain management on end of life folks exclusively using under the tongue, right? So when people go, oh, I just don't feel like that's a great way to get it in. It, it, it's, it, it's a way that we've been managing folks with pain for hundreds of years. Put a dropper, put the amount underneath your tongue. Sit for a minute, okay? Let it sit there, let it absorb. Yes, I know some's gonna come up above the tongue, but enough of it's gonna get absorbed through the vascular system in your mouth. Then swallow. Their guess is that when you do it sublingually, you're getting about an 80% absorption and then maybe another five when you swallow. So that's pretty good um, uh, exposure, retention of what you're putting in. And understand, drug companies know this, so they're manufacturing drugs different knowing about the SIP system in people's bodies and the digestion, okay? So that's why we're doing a little adjusting. Let's talk about CBD as a relatively safe supplement, and I, and I find this fascinating. So in terms of danger and overuse, the recommended dose for most people is somewhere between about 10 and 40 milligrams, okay? Those are not hard numbers. That's, that's an average. You can go up to 100, 200 milligrams, right? You might do fine on five, but it's roughly around 10 to 40. The dose that they have tested for safety and overdose was 20,000 milligrams. 20,000 
two zero comma zero 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 and the side effects was fatigue and diarrhea okay so we we are talking about a relatively safe supplement it's not the supplement i worry so much as it is the junk that's with it right that's that's really what my message is so there there we go with with delivery and dosage and now I'm going to have you, so this was a bit of a change and it still is a challenge for most people. The CBD industry made the decision to mimic the marijuana industry, not the biopharm industry. So when you see, and if you look at this, um, uh, the, the picture, the slide in front of you, what you see is um, look down to the bottom on the left-hand side where it says strength, okay? That's the entire CBD molecule count for the entire um, package. So that is, that 1,000 milligrams is how many CBD milligrams you would get once you've ingested the entire body bottle. So that's kind of like if you went out and you got, you know, baby aspirin at 81 milligrams and there was 100, and the bottle said you had 8,100 milligrams of aspirin in there. That's kind of, um, it's not it's counterintuitive to how we've, we've known how to take our supplements, but understand that it's coming from the marijuana industry, and that is why. And I guess that makes sense, right? Because it's not FDA approved, so it's all right. We have a little bit of a, a learning. <clears throat> Each dropper in these is a dose. So this bottle of 1,000 milligrams is 1,000 milligrams divided by 30, because it's a 30-day supply. And that gives us a dosage in there of, I think it's 33 when I do the math, 33 point something. That's how many milligrams of CBD you're gonna find in one dropper full of that. Okay. And I don't want to get too much into that, but I just wanted you to understand that the number you see on the outside of the container is the total amount of CBD in the entire container, not how much you're getting per, per, per um, application or ingestion. Okay, so we are, I want to make sure I got through all my slides for you. I'm not always um, wonderful at following the slides. I, I did try and follow along. Um, I would be happy to answer any questions. I know that they're gonna provide you guys with how to reach out to me. Um, I love to work with people and have them look at the different brands and compare them um, and decide which is best for them. Um, and um, that's all I have for you today. I thank you so, so much for your time. I hope that this was helpful um, for you and for your loved ones. And um, again, thanks and have a wonderful day. Take care. Thank you so much, Kay. We loved hearing that from you. Now, if you want to be in touch with Kay, you can go to her website, www.kcooney.com, or you can email her at iam at kcooney.com. During times of uncertainty and restrictions on businesses, we are very grateful for our Zyda Remote Hand Cradle. The Zyda Remote Hand Cradle allows you to connect with clients, even without them coming to you, and maintain those relationships. For more information, you can go to zyto.com to learn more about our balance and our remote hand cradle. Right now, we currently have two specials going on for a limited time only. We have a special for our Zyto balance, and that is buy two months, get one month free. You can purchase up to 12 months and get six months free. This promotion ends February 4th, 2021. Along with our Zyto balance promotion, we also have a promotion going on for our hand cradle. The promotion that we have for our hand cradle is you can buy one hand cradle and get one 50% off. This will allow you to save up to $112.50. There is no limit on the amount of hand cradles that you can purchase. Our next webinar will be March 3rd, 2021 at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. See you then.